Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today a very special video, one that I've been planning for quite some time. Today we're going to be taking a look at the entirety of the NECA Alien 40th Anniversary Collector's Action Figure Wave. So in this video I'm going to be taking a look at every single figure that has been released in the 40th Anniversary Wave for the timeless sci-fi classic Alien and these action figures, of course, are produced by NECA Toys. So this collector's figure wave spanned over the course of two years, and within that time we were given four waves of action figures, each containing an alien, or a variation of, and two other figures that were characters of the Nostromo, either in their spacesuits or in their regular jumpsuits. There was also an absolute plethora of accessories to come along with the figures, more, uh, some more than others, but as I say, I'll get into this when I review them individually. So we're going to be taking a look at each individual wave, what I think of each wave, and then at the end we'll do an overall summary and a ranking. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and without any further ado, let's get straight into it. In this wave of action figures, we do have four of the characters in their amazing spacesuits, in my opinion, the best spacesuits in all of sci-fi. We have Ellen Ripley in her spacesuit, Lambert, Kane, and Dallas. We also have five variations of the dreaded xenomorph creature, the bloody alien, the regular, the ultimate, the prototype, and the Giga. Very, very awesome variants. We do have three characters that have never been released before in the form of Brett, Parker, Ash, and we do have a re-release of previously seen figure Ellen Ripley, but with a brand new head sculpt that has never been seen, a very nice update of Jonesy the Cat, a bonus accessory of the cat box, and many, many more. We have a lot to take a look at here, guys, so without any further ado, let's get into the first wave of action figures. So just taking a look at the packaging for this wave, this is heavily inspired by the original Kenner toys, which I really love, Warning Alien, which is very nice, and then you get the name of the character inside the box. All of the figures just have this uh, standard red background, it's all exactly the same, 40th anniversary on the top, ages 17 and up. You do get this nice publicity image of each figure and their description with the 40th anniversary logo, Alien 40th anniversary on that side, and then on the back you get this nice publicity image of the figure, a description of the Alien film which is exactly the same for all of the packagings, and the various other figures that you can collect in the wave, and here's just a couple of examples of the different figures with the packaging, so as you can see they each have their own publicity image, and with every figure that is up here it is not included down here, so as you can see they do differ very slightly. But yeah, aside from that, exactly the same, and really really nice retro style packaging, I think it's something that really sets this wave off. So to start off with, we have a bit of a precursor from the 40th anniversary wave. We have the NECA Ultimate Edition Big Chap. Now this is a re-release of NECA's Alien Big Chap with improved joints, improved paint apps, and in my opinion, just an overall amazing figure. So although technically this isn't a part of the anniversary wave, I do also feel it deserves to be mentioned in this video. It does also have its own individual review on my channel, guys. Really appreciate if you go check that out. But ultimately, no pun intended, what makes this alien such a good pickup is the inclusion of the alien egg, which comes in two pieces. You have the flat base and, of course, the egg container, which, as you can see, is very nicely detailed on the inside. And on the outside, very nice shiny gloss to it, a brilliant detail, and to connect it to the bottom, you just line the two pieces up and clip them in, and you have yourself a very nice alien egg from the inside of the derelict ship. Now this is very different to alien eggs that we've received in the past, obviously this is the first one to have this kind of tentacle base. I think it was always meant to be implied that the alien egg was a creature in its own, and yeah, that's just really creepy when you think about that. It does also come with this brand new version of the face hugger, which is something we've never seen before, and that is actually the dead face hugger. As you can see, it's completely missing the bottom of its skin here, so you can see right inside of it the idea that once it's done 
the job, it falls off its victim and dies, and I do think this is a very nice inclusion. This could also double as an accessory for the Ash figure, but we'll get onto that later. For now, though, it's nice to just place it in the egg and look as though it's about to pop out. Another inclusion, just like with the previous Aliens Ultimate Alien Warrior, it does also come included with a chestburster. This chestburster differing slightly, however, to look more like it did from the original Alien, which I really like. Love the detail of blood and the detail of the silver teeth. Really love the nice bendy wire. If it'll focus. Really love the addition of the bendy wire in here with all the blood details. Very, very nice. And the silver teeth, of course, which really just adds a nice finishing touch to it. Then, of course, we do have the big chap himself, which compared to Necker's, one of Necker's older alien big chaps in my opinion is an enormous improvement with the absence of lanky joints and a much more sturdier feel the greatest improvement for me however would have to be the inclusion of the wonderful ball peg joints as you can see inside there joints that make the legs far more sturdier and less loose and lanky something that you would expect to see on marvel legends and i am overjoyed to see that they have been included on NECA toys. An absolutely wonderful skull dome which is completely transparent. It does have some nice frosting to the dome however so it just gives it a bit of a almost faded look. Really love the details of bio hoses, the silver teeth, the extendable jaw which is present on all of these alien figures that you will see throughout the 40th anniversary wave. The bio tubing as well as the extendable spine here. The bendy wire tail, which is also present on all of Necker's Xenomorphs, and just the overall new colours that have been added to really match that original Big Chap costume as much as possible. The packaging for this figure is different to the rest of the packaging in the 40th anniversary wave, which we will get onto in a moment, as technically this isn't really a part of the 40th anniversary wave. You do have the alien on the side and the a traditional movie poster, which is absolutely fantastic, as well as images of the figure on the back and a viewing window, which has a very nice image of the figure displayed. So, as I said, even though technically this isn't a part of the 40th anniversary wave, it is a very welcome addition to my collection, and I honestly feel as though it goes with the 40th anniversary wave very well, providing a very good variation of the Xenomorph, as well as an egg accessory, face hugger, and chest burster, which really helps build the display for the other figures. So kick-starting the 40th anniversary for NECA's Alien Wave, we have the first wave, which consists of Dallas in his pink spacesuit, Ellen Ripley in her jumpsuit with various accessories, and the prototype Big Chap. So taking a look at this wave objectively, I can understand why some people were probably a bit disappointed of it. It hadn't been long at the time since we'd seen this guy, and she had been released before, obviously with a different head sculpt. We'd also seen this figure, so really this was a wave that consisted entirely of re-releases, which I can understand must have really annoyed people at the time, but let's take a look at the figures. So starting off appropriately enough with Ellen Ripley herself the main character of the film, and the figure, like I say, that I wanted more than any of the others. So I have to say a big, big thank you to my uncle for tracking this figure down for me. It is absolutely fantastic. I really love the sculpting and the paintwork that has been done here, the badge on her shoulder, her hair's really nice, the look of the face sculpt, which some people have actually complained about quite a lot, but I actually do like, I'm just going to be honest. I uh, love the green shirt and the white overshirt, um, which very much reflects the clothes that the other members of the crew wear. You have her white trainers, the pockets and various different creases sculpted in the trousers, the addition of her watch on her left wrist. And what I also really love is how there have been some flesh-toned pinks that fade in and out on the arms and even the face, just to give it a less plasticky feel and more of a real human skin look, which I think has come across really well. Obviously, you have the addition of her flamethrower, which is very nice, very well detailed, and with the inclusion of a nice soft plastic strap to go over her, just really makes it feel like it's come straight from the movie. 
Obviously, the thing that makes this Ellen Ripley much more desirable to the original version is the inclusion of a few additional accessories. To start off with, we do have the scanner, which I never actually realised it was this big, to be honest. You do have the screen there, the various different buttons and, and other things that were attached, and these are actually ice cube makers, which is really funny but it just goes to show you how little bits and bobs can make things and it's very very well detailed looks like it was taken straight out the film and shrunk down absolutely brilliant Ripley wouldn't be the only figure to include one of these but we'll get onto that shortly but the thing that really made this figure just the must-have for me has to be the inclusion of dear old Jonesy the cat with a fully articulated head as you can see here up and down and left to right, and the cute little cat box which she is contained in. So to get this to work, you slide this back, lift up, make sure her head is pointed down so she can fit in, pop her in, close that, and simply lock it with this back piece here. And the detail on this is absolutely fabulous. You even have this on here, which I've only just noticed actually, automatic airlock warning. So I'm guessing like this is how the poor little Jonesy is able to breathe in there. Got this wonderful detail on the side, SD76745441. It just goes to show you the level of dedication and detail that Necker put into this. And oh, look, you can see sweet little Jonesy poking through, just peering through the window there which is very, very cool. I really love this. And this, of course, can be placed into Ripley's hand, which is sculpted to hold, even with Jonesy inside. And I think it just really, really creates a fantastic display and just creates the scene towards the end of the film where she is running through the spaceship. So next up on the list, we have Captain Dallas in his pink spacesuit. Now, I'm going to be honest, there isn't really too much to say about it. If you have one of these spacesuit figures, you pretty much know everything to expect. The only thing that differs is the head sculpt, of course, and the colour of the suit. Now, as I previously said, this figure had been released um, before, so a lot of people were really annoyed that they were basically buying the same figure again. Although, from comparisons that I have seen, this head sculpt has been painted significantly better, even though it is the same head sculpt technically. And there are a few details that differ on the suit, such as the tones of pink and the various different washes of sort of tarnished metal look that it has. I love the inclusion of the name tags on the front, as well as the various different control boxes and all the patterns like these look like hockey pads, they probably were. I really love the kind of um, sort of retro look that these suits have, like it almost looks like one of those older diving suits with the oxygen tank on the back, and the tubes which can be plugged into the head. Now I will show you how you remove the helmet. So I'm not going to take this neck piece off because sadly it is very irritating to do so. And one of my biggest gripes with these figures is it never seems to connect fully at the bottom there, which is a bit of a shame. But when it comes in the box, this will be completely separate off and so will the neck piece. I recommend that you pop the head off, slip the neck piece on and then pop the head on over the top just so you don't risk scratching the paint off, which I've nearly done. And then you have these two little uh, soft plastic wires that come out the back here. You simply just insert them into the little holes provided. And then with the top of the dome, which is very nice, you just insert that into the back and then line it up and clip it over the top. And voila, you have a very, very awesome looking spacesuit. And he does come with two accessories. He has his torch which has been given a sort of shiny silver paint as you see when I hold it into the light it does give the illusion that the torch is actually lit which is a nice touch and this can be slotted into his left hand which is sculpted to do so. His final accessory is his gun which you never actually see him using in the film. This can either be displayed into his right hand like so or can be placed inside of his weapon holster, which I think can be a bit irritating to do so, but once you get the hang of it, it does work really, really well. So, let's 
So overall for Captain Dallas, there isn't really too much to say. He was one of the last figures that I picked up for this wave, and quite honestly, I only picked him up for completionist's sake. He's a nice figure, I have nothing negative to say about him, but like I say, I think it just really rubs salt in the wound that we haven't got a Dallas in his proper Nostromo clothes. But it does really complete the spacesuit scene really well, and having Dallas, Lambert and Kane together really, really looks good on the shelf. So lastly, for Wave 1, we have the prototype Xenomorph. Exactly the same in terms of articulation and structure as the Ultimate Big Chat, which I've showed you, but sculpted in this very, very strange and quite off-putting transparent plastic. It almost has a kind of bone and vomit colour to it, dare I say. It's very off-putting indeed, with the inclusion of the silver teeth and nails just to help it stand out a little bit. Really, really nice. You can really see the transparency when you hold it into the light. You can even see the bendy wire which is visible through the tail. Uh, like I said, not really too much to say about it, although I really must say that it being transparent does help these details such as the skull underneath and the absence of a frost in the dome making it very clear to see it really makes these details stand out and i have to say it is actually very very impressive i must say i do think this figure is quite underrated it's a nice inclusion but i can understand why people were a bit frustrated as once again this was a figure that was released previously However, as previously mentioned, I think with the inclusion of this far better leg joints, you've definitely got yourself a superior version here. And luckily, I hadn't picked up that original version, so this was a very welcome addition to the collection. And next up, we have Wave 2, which for many people is where the 40th anniversary wave really starts to kick off. We have the brand new releases of never-before-seen figures in the form of Parker and Brett, and we also have a brand new variation of the Big Chap Xenomorph, which we have never seen before, in the form of the bloody version. So let's take a look at these awesome, awesome figures. So I think first of all we're going to take a look at Brett, and honestly, as a figure that's never been seen before, this is absolutely brilliant. As I said, the sculpting of the clothing is just exceptional. Love the inclusion of the detail of the various badges, the patterns of the jacket, you've even got Nostromo written on the back. It all helps to make it feel unified when you look at all the different costumes of the characters, seeing the Nostromo logo and even on his hat you can see there. It just really makes it feel like, yes, these are work clothes, these are the clothes that they have to wear while they're on duty. And, you know, Truckers in Space, what an absolutely brilliant concept. Love the addition of pockets, knee pads, and various different things sculpted onto the trousers, the white trainers, and really just love how his hair goes into the hat. It's very well done. His face sculpt is absolutely exceptional. You've even got his five o'clock shadow. Uh, glossiness to the eyes just to really make them feel alive and look very much like the actor, absolutely brilliant. In terms of articulation, has a full 360 at the head, his head has lots of great motion, you bring his arms out, and you have double bend at the arms, which is very nice to see, plenty of good articulation. Sadly, not using the same updated ball joints that the big chap aliens are, which is a bit of a shame, a little loose here and there, but for the most part, still a very good figure and nothing really to gripe too much at. As I said, he uh, Ripley wasn't the only one to come included. He does also come included with a scanner, which is nice. And he does also come included with this, which is the electric shock device that they try to use to capture the alien that they think is just a baby. But, of course, by this point in the film... Oh. It very much isn't. <laughs> Just tried to recreate that scene. That was terrible. So next up, we have the bloody Xenomorph. And I have to say, for variations of this character, this one is impressive. Even though we never actually see him like this in the film... I think the addition of all of these bloody details is just a work of art. It's done really, really well, and it just gives the figure that something extra. Same articulation, same details, not really too much to say. Only real difference is it has blood all over the hands, the face, and going down the chest and even onto the legs. So you can really sort of recreate that scene where Brett just... 
I mean, he, he really doesn't have a good time, let's just put it that way, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely brilliant. So lastly for this wave, we come on to Parker. Now, I have to say, out of all the characters that I saw action figures for, this one looked the most impressive. I think they have just absolutely nailed his likeness. I am not very good at pronouncing the actor's name, so I apologise for that, but this is just absolutely phenomenal. The level of detail that is on this figure is just incredible, right to the little thing he wears on his head, blue on the outside with the red inner lining, to his eyes, his beard, his hair, the texturing is just wonderful. It looks like actual skin, you've even got the gold bracelet, you have the lighter palms of the hands, you know, which is a very nice detail, you have the nice green shirt underneath, and as you can see, Parker is pretty much wearing a variation of Brett's costume. It has the same kind of pockets with the same knee pads, only he's decided to go for white. And he has the green shirt, the same as Ripley does. With very nice details of silver buttons on the front here. A very good amount of articulation, but very, very tight, which is what I've noticed with a lot of these figures. Much like Brett, sadly, he doesn't quite yet have the updated ball joints, but he is still a very solid and awesome figure. And I love him so much, and he absolutely towers over the rest of them. He does also come included with a flamethrower, much like Ripley, but sadly mine is broke, which was entirely my fault, so I'm definitely going to have to get that fixed. And that can slide over him just the same by putting the strap over the head and the arms. He also does come with a swappable hand, which you can pop off here for his right hand, which can help him hold his electric shock device a lot better, which he does also come included with the same as Brett. So overall, really, really nice figure, and one that I'm very, very happy to have. And I think having Brett and Parker included as figures that have never been released before, this is where the 40th anniversary rave really kicked off. Ooh, we're halfway there, guys, promise. So now coming on to wave three, arguably my favourite wave in the whole anniversary line that does include, sadly, another standard version of the Alien Big Chap, Kane with a brand new John Hurt head sculpt, and Ash, a completely brand new figure that we've never seen before that comes with an absolute plethora of accessories. So without any further ado, let's get on to this awesome wave. So I think we're going to start off with just the regular alien. Now, as you can see here, as you guys have just seen my ultimate alien big chap, there is virtually no difference with this. Yes, it is missing the back port, but that's because it came like that. So, you know, a bit of a quality control issue there, but never mind. Uh, this one, however, does have a much more frosted dome. So that is quite nice, actually. I do like that there's a variation. Uh, this is completely random. From what I've seen, some people have had more clear domes and some people have had more frosted. It's really look of the draw, but I'm happy that I have, you know, one of each. So it just kind of differentiates it a little bit from that ultimate version. Really nice figure. You know, it does have the nicest dome out of all the aliens that I have. It's very consistent. There's no lumps or scratches or marks. So, yeah, like I say, articulation the same. Everything's exactly the same. So there's really no need to dwell on this figure too much. So next up, we have Kane, played by the incredible and the wonderful John Hurt. So I just want to show you guys this absolutely amazing head sculpt, and I think that just really makes this figure. I honestly think this is one of NECA's best head sculpts. There is no denying who that is. And I think due to likeness rights, they could only afford to make this one sculpt, which is why we will likely never see an actual figure of Kane in his regular clothes, you know, maybe with a chest burster busting out, which is what loads of people want to see. I honestly think that this head sculpt just really, really makes this figure. It does also come with the original head sculpt, which came in the previous release of this figure, because they didn't have actor rights, they just put the face hugger over the top, which was really clever, but I don't really think this head sculpt does this figure justice. However, I do think this one definitely does. What is nice, though, is that if you do choose to use this head sculpt, 
you do have this swappable helmet dome, which, as I've shown you guys previously, can simply be swapped over by removing this little plastic tube, popping it into this one, and obviously popping this head sculpt on, and it will look a little something like this. So it really does just recreate what it looks like in the film, which is very, very cool. However, personally, if you were to say to me, which would I go with? It would have to be this, because it just looks exactly like John Hurt and when you give yourself the 40th anniversary the um sorry the ultimate big chap with his alien egg you can have him leaning over the top and recreating that scene like he's about to reach out and grab it and just have the face hugger pop out and you know just whatever you guys want for display so yeah I do think it's really nice having the alien egg here to just really recreate that scene and this is why i definitely think you should pick up the 40th anniversary sorry the ultimate big chap because you know getting this additional alien egg just really makes a better display for this guy much the same as dallas he does come included with the torch with the shiny bit and of course his um blaster gun which can be placed in the holster or in his hand i do have a bit of trouble doing it with this figure however so i'm not going to bother and you can just slide the torch in the hand which is sculpted to do so which is his right hand funnily enough instead of his left so there is a bit of a difference there uh taking a look at his suit exactly the same sculpt as dallas in fact it's pretty much the same except for the colors really do like the yellow i feel like it brings the details out there's much more of a bronze on his control panels whereas Dallas and Lambert's suits are a bit darker, as you can see his name there, and love the helmet of these suits, love everything about them, just really, really great figure. The articulation is a bit clunky, but given how bulky the suit is, you really can't blame NECA for that, so fantastic figure, and goes great with this alien egg. And last, but ever so not least for Wave 3, we have the wonderful Ian Holmes, uh, someone who I've been seeing in a lot of movies recently, which has been really great to see. Um, very, very good actor. Loved him in the role. Very creepy as Ash. You know, I remember the scene where he got his uh, head lopped off really frightened me as a kid. But, you know, um, just a really fantastic figure and something which is really great. He has the new updated ball peg joints. So he is the first human character and sadly, the only human character in that, well, he's not human, he's an android, but yet humanoid, uh, to have this updated articulation. So I'm not really sure why this was the case, but it is really nice all the, all the, all the same. I do feel, however, as though he does have one of the weaker head sculpts in the wave. You can definitely tell who it is, but I just don't think it looks enough like Ian Holmes. It, um, I don't know, I think something's definitely been lost in translation with the sculpt, but it's still very good. Like I say, fantastic articulation, although sadly my white paint has rubbed off. It's it's a great figure. I never actually realised he was this small, especially when you compare him to uh, other characters. But yeah, it, it's really, really good. But I think what really makes this figure is the absolute plethora of accessories that he comes with. So obviously he does have his severed head. You know, you still don't realise what you're dealing with here, do you? The perfect organism. So yeah, you've got all that horrible detail in there. All the white stuff, which is covered. You know, I'll let you guys decide what that stuff is he does come with the glass which he chooses which he chew, uh, which he uh, drinks and which contains the what originally you thought was milk but after seeing that and that scene at the end of the film you realize very quickly oh i see what he was drinking now his uh his fuel shall we say and that can be placed into one of his hands which is really how i love displaying him i also really like that you get the little examiner prod that he has here for the dead face hugger now as i say i love that this can actually double as an accessory for ash so you can recreate that scene where he prods the dead face hugger and i really wish i had a diorama of the nostromo with a table so you could kind of have that scene where he's examining it, you know, that would look like an awesome display. But that's why I just love the genius that NECA have done here. 
you know, I really think the the ultimate big chap should just be counted as a part of the 40th because, it, as I say, it has lots of accessories in it that really benefit these other figures. He does come with some interchangeable hands to hold his accessories, and then he comes with, like I say, the various different operating tools that he uses to operate on the face hugger when it's on cane, as you can see here. And lastly, he does come with the magazine that he tries to cram down Ripley's throat. So, yeah, it all depends on which scene you do want to display Ash uh, from, really. And I just love that they include this extra head. I think that's such a cool idea. So, really, NECA are just throwing accessories at you here. And I think you're definitely getting value for money with this figure. Like I say, I think the face sculpt could be better. But overall, with the amount of accessories you're getting, this guy is a necessity. Let's be honest, you can't have an alien display without Ash. And last but ever so not least, guys, thank God, we have wave four so this wave contains ripley in her white spacesuit lambert in her blue spacesuit which completes the three spacesuit characters from the scene exploring lv426 and then of course we have the latest iteration of the same bloody figure <laughs> the giga alien an alien variant which i actually really love and we'll get onto that in just a moment I think we're going to start off with Lambert, so first of all, let's take a look at the additional accessory that comes with this figure, which I don't think the original did. I could be wrong, I'd have to look, but it is Lambert in, well, the way she looks normally, and I have to say, this does look very much like her, unlike the head sculpt that we do get in there. And I think, once again, this is just another sign that we are not going to get a Wave 5, we're not going to get these characters in their regular clothes. Because of the inclusion of this head, I really wish they'd done a head for Dallas, but, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, very nice head sculpt, does look a lot like her, I have to say they've done a very good job here. Nice little add-on to the side, but bringing in Lambert as we see her in her spacesuit, as you say, just exactly the same as the other spacesuits, but in a different colour. She does come with her little torch as a little accessory, and her blaster, which I've already got in the holster there exactly the same as the other suits however the colors different obviously and i do really like this blue also something that is different is they have actually painted yellow on here to be her torch light which is something they didn't on the other two figures which was a nice little last minute inclusion i guess uh, all the details the same it's really just variation of color as you can see instead of a copper this is more of a brown you know uh, still has that tarnished blue look to it which is really nice and then taking a quick look at the head sculpt inside, you can see you've got this very uh, shocked head sculpt, which I actually quite like. It almost looks like where if she walked in and saw Kane with the face hugger on his face and she was just freaking out. So, yeah, like I say, it doesn't really have much of a likeness to the actress as this one does, but it's still very good all the same. And, yeah, uh, not really too much to say. It is yet again just another spacesuit figure and while i do like that it completes the trio of spacesuit characters yeah there just isn't too much to say about it i'm kind of getting fed up with spacesuit figures at this point which uh, isn't a good thing when we bring in our next figure oh look it's another spacesuit figure goody well i suppose the good thing is is that this is from you know the end of the movie and this is actually my favorite spacesuit so you know there is that. So, exactly the same. In fact, what's actually interesting, and I'm not sure if NECA knew about this, but this spacesuit is actually this one, just repainted white, because they they thought it would just be easier to repaint it than go to all the trouble to, you know, make another suit. So, uh, I find that really funny that they've come together in the same wave. They're the exact same suit. But obviously there are some differences with this one. You don't have a name tag. A lot of the colourful details are missing, aside from the red valves. And also you've got these strange little patterns on the fingers. And also a logo on her back pocket. So, yeah, I do really love this, you know, how everything's white. And I do also think that the head sculpt in there looks very good a lot of people have said it doesn't look like sigourney i actually think it does a really good job i actually do prefer it to the 
uh, sort of shock head sculpt that you get with the standard version. And yeah, I do really like this figure. I'm not really going to go over the details again because, you know, it, it is exactly the same. Uh, but she does come with a different weapon. It's her... I'm not really sure what it's like. Harpoon gun. Uh, but what is annoying is because there's no hole and it's not sculpted, you can't actually insert these into the gun, which is a shame. But she does come with both an open and closed version, which is really for when she's uh, fighting the big chap. So, yeah, that is... Uh, what can I say, really? It's a nice inclusion, especially for completionists, but I could understand for those who got the original version of this figure why this would be an easy pass for you, so, yeah. And now, last but ever so not least, by wrapping up this video and saving my sanity, because I've been doing this for more than an hour now, we have the Giger Alien. Yes, so out of all of the variations that NECA have done of the Ultimate Big Chat, which is my favourite, I have to say that the Giga Alien, for me, is the most worthy. I think, you know, having this combination between the transparent prototype alien, but given this very lovely wash, this darker wash over the top, almost smoked into the plastic, just really does make this look like something unique. I think the idea is, is this is supposed to look like Giga's artwork, and honestly, Looking at it, I think they definitely have done that justice. I love how clear you can see the skull in the dome. I really love the different style of teeth. Instead of the silver, you have a more bone style. As you see, when you hold it into the light, you can still see the transparency, but it has a much darker, more smokier look to it. Very, very nice. And you can really see where the washes have been applied over the top. Just very, very awesome. Uh, exactly the same as, you know, all others in terms of articulation. The mouth doesn't want to come out. But, yeah, just very, very interesting. Also, the edge of the tail has a little flick of white, which is strange, but there you go. And he does come with an additional accessory, unlike the bloody Xenomorph, the standard Xenomorph and the prototype. He comes with a very Giga-esque version of the dead facehugger. Once again, to look more like his artwork, just comparing it with the standard version here, you can see those very obvious differences. And I have to say, I do actually really prefer this version. I think those additional darker washes just really highlight the detail and really just make it look brilliant. So overall, there's not a massive amount to say about it, but out of all of the variations of, like I say, this figure, I think this one is definitely worth it. And I have to say, I think this is, for the first time, an alien is the best figure in the whole wave. So, yeah, really good one there. Okay, guys, so just to finish up, I'm going to rank all of the waves in the order from worst to best. Not to say that any of these waves are bad, because to be quite honest, None of them are, but just to kind of give you my personal opinion, if yours differs, that's absolutely fine. Let me know down in the comments. So coming in at the least interesting, we do, of course, have Wave 4. Uh, getting two spacesuit figures in one wave, I feel, is just a bit much for me. And as much as I really like them, that's not to say that I don't like them. I just think it comes across as a bit meh, especially for the price that you're paying do, however, really love the Giga Alien and the inclusion of the Giga Facehugger and the additional Lambert Head is enough to still make this wave good. So next up we have Wave 1. Now this is very difficult because, as I say, I love this Ripley figure and I'm so, so grateful to have it. The Prototype Alien is okay. It's not really something I'd be crying buckets if I didn't manage to get. And the Dallas figure, it's just a nice way of completing the space suit figure collection to be quite honest but yeah overall i think the ripley figure is what really sells this wave and i understand why it's sold out so quickly uh, this is a really really difficult one but coming in at second place is going to have to be wave two i absolutely love the bloody xenomorph i think it's a nice variation really love brett as a figure and parker although i do find them to be lacking in accessories however it's understandable because they don't really well have much else in the film to be honest really great looking figures i am a bit disappointed that they didn't have the new updated joints in there but I still think they're fantastic figures all the same. 
And lastly, coming in at my favourite wave, it has to be wave three. Now, even though I am a little annoyed about getting just a copy of the Ultimate Alien, I think just these two figures alone, when you have Ash, is such a great figure and has so many good accessories, more accessories than any other figure, has the updated uh, ball peg joints, you know. Even though his likeness isn't fully there, I still think he's an absolutely fantastic figure, but the figure that makes me fall in love with this wave is Kane, and I love his spacesuit is my one of my favourites. Obviously, Ripley's white one is my favourite, but I still love his... That John Hurt head sculpt is absolutely spot on, and it really sells this figure for me. And obviously, when you bring the alien egg in from the ultimate big chap, it just really just completes this figure and the display. And it's wonderful to have Lambert and Dallas stood behind him on the display as well. And yeah, just an absolutely fantastic wave of figures. But my absolute favourite has to be the ultimate big chap. If you were to say to me what figure out of this entire wave could I keep, it has to be the man himself, the creature of the film and just the absolute amazing figure that he is. Love his accessories and just overall really love the figure. I love the overall look, I love the updated joints and I love the articulation, I love everything about it. So overall absolutely amazing wave of figures okay so that's gonna do it for this video guys i really really hope you've enjoyed this as much of uh, as i've enjoyed making it you know i absolutely love these figures if you were to say to me what is the best wave of action figures that you've ever collected I think there's no doubt which one would come to mind, and as I've said multiple times, I would like to say a big, big thank you to my amazing uncle who did make this video possible by somehow finding me the last figure and the most hardest to get I needed for a very reasonable price. She's absolutely wonderful, and she really just completes the display. So, yeah, big, big thank you to him. I am overjoyed with these figures, and although I am a little upset that we won't be getting a Wave 5, I would love to see, obviously, Kane, Dallas, and Lambert in their regular clothing, the jumpsuits. You know, I, I just really, really am a bit upset about that, but I think it comes to likeness rights and stuff. What I am very pleased about, as I've said, that we have gotten this amazing John Hurt head sculpt, as well as a couple of other accessories that are exclusive to the 40th anniversary versions that weren't present in the original versions. And like I say, if you're like me and you missed out on pretty much all of the original releases of um, these spacesuit figures and these aliens, you are going to be absolutely overjoyed with this wave. And of course, on top of that, you are getting brand new characters that we haven't had released, a brand new head sculpt for Ripley, and of course, brand new variations of the Xenomorph, or the Big Chap, as it was called, that we have never seen before, such as the Giga Alien, the Prototype Alien, and the Bloody Alien. Overall, I think this wave provides enough diversity and enough new inclusions to justify that uh, that double dip if you are someone who owns the original. Like I say, if you're like me and you missed out on them, this is the perfect wave for you. Now, obviously, I am a little late with reviewing this. These figures will now, I imagine, be quite difficult to come by, but if you can come by any of them just for a reasonable price, I would highly, highly recommend that you pick them up. And hey, guys, look, I never thought I would get hold of this figure, but it just goes to show you guys, if you want something badly enough, then something will come your way. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. I own figures that I never in a million years thought I would have owned. And like I say, big shout out to my uncle for making this video possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I know I certainly have in making it. And just thank you for all the support that you guys give me. And I'm honestly really grateful for every single one of you. If you want to see more alien content and you want to see me cover more alien figures, maybe some predator figures, I am going to do my best with collecting NECA, but honestly, after this wave, I am uh, somewhat 
not as loaded as I used to be, let's just put it that way. <laughs> so yeah, I will do my absolute best to bring as much content as I can for you guys. So I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. Please give it a like, please give it a share guys, because it means so much and it's good for the algorithm, especially because I'm a small channel. And um, please leave a comment down below, let me know what you think of these figures, which is your favourite, which is your favourite wave, are you considering getting any, and just whether or not you enjoyed this video or not, because I really appreciate the feedback. So, as always, guys, stay safe and happy wherever you are in the world, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.